Maldives is a country of 2,000 islands off the southwest tip of India, and the country's president is this guy, Mohammed Nasheed. Now, he is a man on a mission. His country is the lowest nation on the planet. Uh, that is, it sits less than five feet, that's one and a half meters, above sea level. And you know we're always hearing about the oceans rising, a fact connected to climate change? Well, Nasheed says that means he is leading a sinking nation, a nation that may not make it out of this century. Rising sea levels could wipe the Maldives off the map. For us, climate change is no vague or abstract menace, but a clear and a present danger to our survival. Of course, he wasn't always in charge. In the 90s, Nasheed led a pro-democracy movement against the country's 30-year dictatorship, and he paid the price. 12 arrests, 6 years in jail, 18 months of that in solitary confinement. Amnesty International declared him a prisoner of conscience, and his detractors call him an opportunist who hogs the limelight. But now, the people call him president. Nasheed is the subject of a new film called The Island President. It's about his rise to power and how he plans to save his people from disappearing under the sea. It won't be any good to have democracy if we don't have a country. Everything is worse than we originally thought. It's got much, much worse. Please welcome President Mohammed Nasheed. Nice to see you, sir. Nice to meet you. How are you? Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a seat. Uh, you are in a, uh, you know, anybody who takes over the leadership of a country often faces big challenges, trying to end and reform a country, big challenges, but then to face the reality of the fact that your country is sinking. <laughs> That's completely unbelievable. That's almost in science fiction. Well, um, climate change is um, real, especially to the Maldives. Um, we are already experiencing the challenges of it. And whoever who is the leader of the Maldives has to be aware of it. And we will have to give our best shot at it and see how we may be able to find a, a situation where we can also live. Um, yes, it is a challenge. Are you scared of what's happening? I am scared and I am really quite sad also because, you know, um, uh, in, by the time my children uh, get married and, and when they want to start a life, I think uh, the challenges would be fairly, fairly high and it's going to be very difficult for them. Are you worried that Maldives will just be a memory for them? And that the entire country is going to have to uh, leave? I, I don't want to go there and I don't want to think along these lines. And, and I will work as much as I can uh, so that we may be able to live and we may be able to survive. But we all know that there are many, many nations that have vanished uh, and we only have them as a memory. Um, we, ca we can, the people can relocate themselves, but uh, people ask me where would the butterflies go, where would the sounds go, and the colors go. Um, I don't think uh, there can be another Maldives in the middle of anywhere else. So we just have to make sure that we have to work as much as we can. Uh, there's a scene in this film where, what I like about it is that through most of the film it's you and your team, and there's people working really hard together. And then there's this moment where you will go, you go on your own and you go against their wishes and tension really builds. And you, when you watch this film back, you'll see the things they say <laughs> about your actions when you're off doing what you're doing. And I wondered if you, if maybe sometimes that you're, you're, you're the same zeal that you had to, to topple dictatorships and to build this might sort of cloud your vision in terms of being able to to, to work together with these people because you went on your own. It was really, to compromise. And I, it felt like a really difficult I, I, I think that is something that I've always done and I think that is something that I will always have to do. Um, there must be times that when you kind of, you have to decide that, yes, um, this is what everyone else is thinking, but um, uh, what is possible um, uh, and what we can actually realistically achieve has to be understood and thought out. And you have to go. Um, very often I think I've done that, not only now. Um, most of the times I, I've been f fairly fortunate that it hasn't really um, ruined everything. But um, one of these days it is going to ruin everything. <laughs> Um, I should be mindful of that also, but um, I think I, 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 I should be mindful of what my inner self is telling me as well, 
uh, as much as uh, I should be mindful as with what everyone else is telling me. Uh, you've been slightly removed from what happened in Copenhagen now. How, do, how would you sum up the events, the results, or lack thereof? I, I thought a number of leaders came together. Uh, they were not able to deliver what the people actually wanted. But because all of them sat together in, in conference, and because a number of understandings were reached, um, although there is no legally binding agreement, but I think there is a politically binding agreement. There is a coming together of minds and understanding that you know, we have a problem, and we have to solve it, and we have to attend to it. Is that too late, then? It's too late. So then. <laughs> well, it's too late for us. We won't be around. <laughs> so, you know, uh, we, we have a window of opportunity of about seven years. Yeah. And oh, that's not going to happen because here's the thing. You, you saw Kyoto. There was a deal in Kyoto, and nations, Canada included, didn't ratify it. No. So they didn't. And the only thing I could take from that is they don't really care. I'm a president, and I can't say all these things about countries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you did say something in the film I need to ask you Well, about. they didn't edit it, did they? No, they didn't. <laughs> and neither are we. <laughs> well, I haven't seen I haven't seen the film, and I, I really hope that there is, uh, you know, it's uh, decent. <laughs> Look, the film is more than decent. It's very interesting. It's, uh, it's, I, I've, I don't think I've ever seen a head of state be portrayed so candidly to show... You, the passion, but no, also I the try, frustration. I tried to be a head of state. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, I tried my best. To, yeah. Well, you did that. You did that. But there was a line in the film that you, you were talking about. You were frustrated with the process of getting countries on board, and you, were, you, you ex expressed some sort of disbelief at the role India was playing. And you said, India is acting like Canada. And historically, we took that to mean something good, but we know that you didn't mean something good by that. No, they were hiding it. They were hiding it, yeah. <laughs> they were hiding it, and it was very cleverly done. You yes. know? <laughs> so what did you see Canada do when you were there? Not seen. Not seen at all. <laughs> so when you go back home and you say, listen, there was a window of opportunity, and, and I don't want to make jokes or light about this because this is your country no, that is going is away. No, this is serious, yes. You know, if the, if the oceans it's, rise... It's, if the oceans rise, we won't be around. And, and not only us, um, there are so many other thousands and thousands of people, millions of people, who will be affected. And, and this is actually quite real. Uh, people are still unable to understand the gravity of it, I, I suppose, but um, soon we are going to see um, how, how stupid we were. The British were supportive of your, of your bid to become the leader of the country. Are they supportive of what you're doing now? Well, I think um, um, th they are, um, well, uh, uh, they would rather if I did it uh, a, a way, another way around, perhaps. But um, I think most countries would listen to the Maldives um, because they understand how fragile we are and, and how delicate the whole situation is to us. So um, for us, this is unrelenting, and, and we really have to stick to it. And we have to say what we have to say. And I believe that others will also understand that this is something that we have to keep doing. There's a natural distrust that happens uh, from the outside world that when they see one country or one political party fund another, that in return they'll want something. That's the, you know, campaign reform in terms of funding is a big issue here in North America. When, when people found out that maybe certain the Brit British conservatives were funding your campaign, no, it, that they'd want something in return. No, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't fund our campaign. Uh, there's a foundation called Westminster Foundation yeah. for Democracy. And um, um, I was writing letters to everyone, including the Queen and the Westminster Foundation for did Democracy. She write, did she write you back? Uh, she did. No, she didn't. <laughs> she did. What did she uh, say? Uh, <laughs> She's, I shouldn't say that. You should say that. <laughs> uh, um, um, well, I was in exile, and I was uh, fishing out and trying to see who would, who would help us. Um, and then uh, Westminster Foundation for Democracy uh, was receptive, and they said they could only do this through another political party. So uh, we, we thought that because this was one of the oldest parties around, uh, they would have a little bit of experience in building a political party. Um, what we were trying to do was to build a political party in the Maldives. Uh, so we got the Conservatives' assistance in building the political party. Um, do you share similar values with that British Conservative well, Party? Uh, uh, they said we have to. <laughs> we, you know, if, if we were to go for the Conservatives, we have to be centre-right. But are you centre-right? Uh, well, yes, we are. 
um, um, it's difficult now to kind of you know judge and and categorize yourself uh, in these kind of political compartments. Um, we are trying to consolidate democracy in the Maldives, and that calls for a whole set of other uh, kind of policies and issues to be dealt with. What's your inner self telling you now about the situation you're in? Uh, it's it's strange and and it is um, you know overwhelming that um, you are celebrating the motives and it is um, we are we are extremely grateful and thankful. Um, I understand um, how much we are gaining from your assistance, uh, from the fact that uh, you, you are willing to interview me and the whole of your public would be um, listening to it, um, while you know Canada is yet to make more progressive moves in, in climate change. Um, we are a very small country. Uh, we are a very, you know, our means are very, very modest. We have to fend for ourselves. Um, so, uh, and we, we can't spend millions and millions of dollars on, on publicity as much as the oil companies can. Right. Uh, so we'll have to try and see how we may be able to get the message across. Is that why you decided to do a film? Because a lot of people say that that's money that goes into PR. I, 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 I didn't do the film. I, I didn't decide to do a film. And I didn't pay for a film at all. I didn't know that there was this kind of, this huge film coming up. You didn't, you didn't, I didn't know at all. Um, I, did, did people not tell you that there's well, all these cameras? Were... <laughs> there, 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 there's always cameras around, yeah, but yeah. you'd never think that they would cut it out to make a film out of it. <laughs> you know, <there's, laughs> I, I wouldn't think that that's what what you're doing now, but uh, they did tell me, and, and you know, there were always pieces of papers that they bring to you to sign, and you, yeah. of course, keep on signing. <laughs> Do you read what you're signing? Well, you know. Uh, you 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 do you do sometimes, uh, uh, but I didn't actually. I, I I honestly didn't think it was uh, cut out to you know. Joan was doing that. Um, I, 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 he's, he, 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 he traveled along with me, yeah. which was, you know, fine. And I thought an, uh, an extra pair of eyes uh, to see what was happening. And, and perhaps um, I can have a chat with him later on, on, on to see what was happening on these islands. And he would also have snaps and pictures and mo movies of, you know, what was happening. So I can perhaps have a look. I didn't think that it was... Coming to all, coming all the way to Toronto as a film, <laughs> so I haven't seen it yet. Oh boy, you're in for a treat. <laughs> it's a great film. It's really it's I, interesting. I, I hope it's not so embarrassing. No, it's actually I, not embarrassing. You know what's it's really unique is that you do something that most leaders don't do is you allow yourself to be vulnerable, and everybody is vulnerable, but you're not afraid to show it, and I find that to be. An interesting choice. Silly. <laughs> it's, no, it's very it's strong because if you're not vulnerable, then we don't think you're real. And when politicians aren't vulnerable, we know they're not real. So is it a conscious choice to, to, to just be open about this because the, the situation is so know, dark? Whatever I say um, on, in this regard, you know, um, I am a politician, and, and, um, but I don't want to be anything else that I am not. And, and if people don't like me for this, you know, I could just leave and go. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. Um, if they want me to do the things that I'm doing in the manner that I'm doing, um, as the person who I am, um, I'll, I'll do it. Otherwise, um, I'll just sit and read again. It's good to see you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Real Thank pleasure. You. <laughs> the movie is called Island President. President Mohammed Nasheed. We'll be right back. Thank you so much. Thank you.